Hello educators, today we will be unveiling the colors in leaves with a leaf chromatography activity. This activity not only teaches students the pigments in leaves or the colors in leaves, but also why some are more visible during certain seasons more so than others. For upper elementary grades, I recommend this more as an experiment. So you'll be taking green leaves from different species of trees and seeing if the students can guess their fall colors based on the colors that show up on the leaf chromatography. For lower elementary, I recommend this more as a demonstration. So we'll be using colored leaves to show the colored pigments and they can make the association that the pigments in the leaves are what causes the colors in the fall. Each student will be tasked with going outside and collecting a pile of leaves. Lower elementary, again, we want them to have multiple colors of leaves, but for upper elementary, if you decide to do this more as an experiment, then we wanna go with green leaves from different trees. So the leaf chromatography activity will be separating the pigments in the leaves based on a method called paper chromatography. The pigments that the students will be basically rolling onto the paper with a quarter will be dissolved and allowed to separate through the paper. Larger molecules will not travel as far, and those are typically your green or your chlorophyll molecules, while the other pigments will go further up the leaf. So you'll get this array of colors per leaf. As we know, autumn means leaves changing colors. And those beautiful pigments that we see in the fall, particularly the yellow and the oranges, have actually been in the leaf all year long. But they've been covered up by the very prominent green pigment known as chlorophyll, which is very important for the photosynthesis process. But when fall comes and the days get shorter and the temperatures get colder, the leaf starts preparing for winter and shuts off the water supply to the leaves. As a result, the chlorophyll begins to break down, unveiling the other pigments hidden inside the leaf. You'll need a minimum of three glass jars, same number of pencils or pins, but you will need at least one pencil a pile of leaves, various colors for the demonstration, green leaves from different trees for the experiment, a quarter, scissors, paper towels or filter paper, tape measure, tape, rubbing alcohol, higher concentration I have found does best, and then foil or wax paper to cover up the jars. To prep the activity for your students, Fill a jar with alcohol about a half an inch from the bottom and cover it with foil or wax paper to prevent evaporation. Cut strips of paper towels or filter paper so one end can be taped to the pen or pencil and the opposite end would barely sit just under the surface of the rubbing alcohol. The students will be marking a one inch line with the pencil where they need to be doing their rubs. However, if you prefer to have this pre-marked, you can do this now. A coin for rubbing, measuring tape, the same amount of pencils as jars, and tape. Whether you're using green leaves or leaves that have already turned colors, we want to make sure that we use very bright, hydrated leaves. Leaves that have been on the ground a long time or are dehydrated will not provide enough pigment to make this activity successful. We also want to make sure that the paper does not touch the sides of the jars. It's really important that the rubbing alcohol starts from the bottom and continues up the paper from one direction. If possible, for each strip, use multiple leaves from the same group, whether that group is based on color or on species of tree. You'll want to wait 20 to 30 minutes for the pigments to run up the paper. However, you do not want it to reach the pencil or the pen up top. What's really easy about this activity is that all leaves are going to render the same results. No matter the color or the species of tree that you pull the leaf from, all leaves will have those pigments of yellow and orange. The intensity of the colors will depend on one, the amount of those pigments in the leaf and two, how much of that pigment the students were able to roll onto their piece of paper. Okay, educators, you are all set to do this activity with your students. I love seeing the results, so if you can, please take pictures and send it to us 
and share your experience with this activity. Thanks everyone, and I will see you next mission.